With everything else speeding up in the world, it seems that the airplane experience has stayed the same. But why is that? While everyone is trying to create things to save time, when will we see fast commercial aircraft that are able to cross continents in a very short amount of time? And why hasn't this happened already? Over the last 50 years, we expected to see a lot of changes in aviation technology, or commercial airplanes, and the improvements of their speed. But what we got is even slower planes than the ones that were flying in the 60s. So why haven't we made this progress? In order for that question to be answered, we need to take a look at just how fast a plane can fly, and does it have the potential to fly faster? Generally speaking, the average cruising speed of most commercial jet aircraft is somewhere between 400 and 525 knots, which equals roughly 460 and 580 miles per hour. However, this speed is affected by many other factors such as the weight of the plane and the thrust settings. All of this can result in a higher or lower speed of the aircraft. It's been noted that an airplane with a tailwind will fly faster relative to the ground than one that struggles against a headwind. The speed also is separated into two different speeds, ground speed and airspeed. The ground speed is the amount of time it takes for a plane to cover a distance above the ground it's flying over. Most commercial planes have a ground speed between 300 and 600 nautical miles per hour. The airspeed, on the other hand, is the speed at which air passes over the wing of the plane. So with a better idea of how the airplanes are able to achieve speed, we can't help but wonder, can planes fly faster than that? Well, in theory they can. One example is the Boeing 777, which has a top speed of 575 miles per hour, but it generally cruises slower. So while commercial jets are quite capable of reaching a higher speed, they choose not to and stick to their slower cruise speed. This is due to all the natural forces that affect the speed of the aircraft, as well as other factors that we're about to dive into. The first factor that makes these commercial jets as slow as they are is the fuel, or to be more specific, the cost of the fuel. This is one of the primary reasons why these planes haven't gotten faster over the years. Back in 1983, the air travel from New York to Denver took 19 minutes less than what it takes today and flying from Miami to Washington, D.C. took 45 minutes less than 1973. So it's a fact that the jets were faster back in the days, but even if you increase the speed today by, let's say, 10%, your aircraft would end up consuming 20% more energy because of the aerodynamic drag. Due to this, higher speeds equals higher fuel consumption, which isn't the best thing as it would immediately result in higher operating costs. Even though an aircraft is fitted with an engine that can withstand great speed above the usual 580 miles per hour, it would be for nothing if you don't smash that like button if you haven't done so already. But no, it'd be for nothing if you don't have the sources to make sure you have enough fuel to get you through those speeds. Now, if airplanes continue to fly at the speed they're flying, they'd save up on fuel costs and overall operational costs since the plane would use up less fuel than if it were to fly at high speed. However, 580 miles per hour is still pretty fast, and when it comes to such large planes with so much power and thrust able to carry great weights, it ends up being a pretty average speed. The faster the plane goes, the more fuel it uses per mile. Consider that you have a limited amount of fuel on your aircraft and you end up going faster than the cruise speed. You'll end up spending more fuel and you could risk your life and the aircraft by eventually running out of fuel. While economic limits are a true problem, in this case, we have to point out that technical limitations are one of the other reasons for planes not flying faster. The engines used in modern planes might be larger than the ones used in the past, but they also operate way better at slower speeds. If the engine of a plane allows better flight at lower speed, this means that it sets a limit on the plane on how fast it can go, and you surely don't want to risk going faster and burning out your engine. The most commonly used engines in modern commercial airplanes are high-bypass engines, which are built to be larger in diameter and offer various advantages over the older designs. This air-breathing type of engine is capable of achieving the same amount of thrust with more air passing through at lower speeds. They're the most efficient at a speed of 400 to 620 miles per hour, so any higher speed than that could affect the performance of the engine. So in a high-bypass engine, achieving that same thrust with more air passing through at lower speeds is done by routing most of the air, up to 93% in some cases, around the turbine, then passing through it. The efficiency of these engines peaks at a lower speed, which is why manufacturers go for slower aircraft instead of focusing on building the fastest commercial airplane in the world. While there are faster engines in the world, it doesn't necessarily mean that a faster engine will result in a quicker flight. In fact, there's no guarantee that a fast engine would benefit the aircraft or the flight. While many aircraft are limited on using a turbofan engine, 
There is, in fact, an engine that is capable of achieving higher speeds, and that's the turbojet engine, which is used for supersonic aircraft or those who are able to reach a speed of up to 1300 miles per hour. While we're speaking of supersonic and turbojet engines, we believe it's only fair to mention some of the aircraft that have managed to fly faster than your average commercial airplane. Commercial planes have largely remained the same since the 1960s, but there's one thing that can show us all the possibilities and limits of commercial flights. Supersonic planes are turbojet-powered aircraft that have the potential to reach speeds up to 1,345 miles per hour. The most popular supersonic passenger commercial airplane is the Concorde, which operated from 1969 to 2003. The 1,345 mile per hour speed that the Concorde could reach was just over twice the speed of sound. So you try and imagine just how fast that is. If a flight from New York to London took about seven hours on a regular commercial aircraft, the Concorde could easily do it in half that time. To this day, it remains to be one of the fastest commercial aircraft. However, even though the Concorde was extremely fast, it wasn't really economical since it was using around 47 pounds of fuel for every mile it flew. Also, it was only able to accommodate 100 passengers. When the Concorde first began with commercial flights, there weren't many people waiting in line to get on this supersonic aircraft. Why? Well, since it was so fast, it ended up costing way more money than the average plane. Also, traveling at supersonic speeds generates a sonic boom, which creates a loud noise that might be fine while flying over oceans, but is definitely not fine over cities. Another supersonic airliner that became a competitor to the Concorde was the Tu-144 Tupolev, which appeared similar to the Concorde. The Russian version of the Concorde suffered many structural and mechanical issues during testing and two significant crashes before it could be mass-produced. And with that, the project was canceled by government officials. While we've told you why it's best for commercial planes to fly at slower speeds and which aircraft can actually fly over the speed of sound, we might as well tell you about one last factor that might be the most important of them all. Now imagine that flights started flying faster. The companies would have to spend more money on fuel to allow the plane to fly faster, meaning that the money would have to come from somewhere. Well, that'll eventually come from you. If all of this happens, we believe that ticket prices will slowly go up and up and become super pricey. While in the past, around the 1960s, planes were flying a bit faster, the ticket prices were far more expensive than they are today. They had limited entertainment options, poor food, and less comfortable conditions. All of these things have improved since then, with many options of entertainment, improved food, and comfortable seats. But the plane does fly slower. So do people actually care about fast commercial jets in the first place? Sure. No one wants to be stuck on an airplane for 12 hours, but there are so many upgrades done to the planes already that you won't even feel that 12 hours have passed. Some airplanes even have live TV and Wi-Fi options, so you'll never truly be bored. Improving the flight time would only result in spending more money both by the passengers and by the airline. So if the fuel efficiency and the engine choice weren't enough reasons why commercial planes can't fly faster, consider this factor as well the next time you're on a flight and ask yourself if you're willing to spend more money just to get somewhere 45 minutes faster. Who knows? Maybe in the future we'll get to see some faster planes that'll avoid these factors and make us go anywhere in the world in a very short period of time. Bye for now.